So here we are. Um, we've just gone through the Greeks. We talked about a little the Linnaeus. We talked about Lamarck. Let's get to the meat of this. Charles Darwin, who I'm pretty sure you've heard of at this point in your life. <clears throat> I'm going to go over the history of Charles Darwin. Again, not a big, um, this is historical context. In the 1700s, scientists literally fought over whether species change over time. Lamarck was put forward a controversial idea. Other people were arguing about literally coming to uh, blows. And when scientists back then came to blows, they had like canes and stuff. They would be wailing on each other. Science conferences back then, soup, they were like fight club. <clears throat> they were starting to find fossils. Uh, at this point, you found some of the earliest fossils, well, the earliest modern fossils um, in, in cliff walls. They've been finding fossils of dinosaurs for hundreds of years, but they've started to explain those away as a uh, beast that died for one reason or another. So some of them were, maybe those are dragons, they got killed off. A lot of times the idea was um, they got killed in the flood. That was the catch-all for everything. Eh, they died in the flood. Um, so they're just not around anymore. Nothing wrong with them. In the 1800s, people were think most people were thinking organisms did not change. Lamarck put forward the idea. Darwin took it one step forward. He provided a focus for the argument. Darwin started off, um, his father sent him to be a doctor. Like most people, he disappointed his father. Um, and instead, he, went, he quit school and went on to become a member of the clergy. Now, by member of the clergy, that doesn't mean he was a priest. It's just that's where you go to get trained to be a scientist in this uh, age. He apprenticed himself to this guy, John Stevens Henslow. Uh, Henslow was a botanist. Henslow is sort of, think of it like the professor that took him under his wing. So Darwin started making those connections. Henslow introduced him to this dude, um, Captain Robert Fitzroy. And Fitzroy was preparing his ship called the Beagle for a trip around the world. It was a survey trip. Back then, you could just go around and make maps, figure out what was where, figure out where other ships could stop to restock to get food. The Beagle left England in December of 1831, outfitted. The primary mission of the voyage was to chart the poorly known stretches of South America. So basically, you went from England down to South America, and you started going around the coastline. You go all the way around the coast in order to um, map out all the bays, all the safe areas where a ship could um, moor um, during a storm. From there, you can see it hit the Galapagos Islands, which we'll talk about in a second, over to Australia, uh, across to Africa, back up to South America, then up to England. Darwin, instead of spending all of his time on ships, spent most of his time on shore. Um, the, he was tracking with the ship. He observed and collected thousands of plants and animals. Um, it wasn't just a, you know, this part of the mission was see what's out there for scientific purposes. So he sailed around the world on the Beagle. Um, he was gathering data, gathering evidence, gathering fossils, and seeing what was around. Questions or concerns? I know, that's a short one. 